Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville Show. My name is Jerry Miller. Thank you kindly for joining us. It is Monday, October 5th, 2020. It's good to be with you. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville Network, the largest and most reaching platform in Central Virginia. By a long shot, a lot to cover on today's program. Whether Wherever you digest this news, whether Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, our e-newsletter that goes out to 140,000 inboxes every day or on ilovesevo.com. The whole premise of the program is to bring information to you in approachable, honest fashion. We put that information on, on the real estate and on the platforms you spend hours every day upon, and that's social media. Do me a favor, give the show a like and a share. Today's program is going to be in fa- impactful. We have a mayor who over the weekend posted on her Facebook page that has a lot of traction in a spot where she originates a lot of her ideas, where she's going to then present to council a mayor who is considering banning indoor dining in the city of Charlottesville as we head into the winter when outdoor dining is potentially fragile as the weather goes from fall to frigid here in Charlottesville, Central Virginia, and in the Blue Ridge Mountains. We have um, cafe taxes due. City Hall saying you have until October 30th to pay your cafe taxes, restaurants in Charlottesville. The dichotomy or the compare and contrast nature of the city of Charlottesville and Albemarle County and how they are assisting restaurants in this community is, frankly speaking, just not just or equitable. Albemarle County is issuing grants for restaurants, wineries, and breweries to to, to get money from the county so they can put up tents And within those tents have heating and air conditioning, depending on the weather outside. We know in the fall, and certainly going into the winter, that the weather can fluctuate from chilly to hot at the drop of a notice, you know, a drop of a hat. So we're going to understand what Charlottesville is doing and how it's going to impact the budget, how it's going to impact the... uh, the, the 2021, you know, horizon and landscape. I, I, I again question the entrepreneurial and innovative mindset by some of our members on council. We're going to talk about Regal Cinema temporarily closing movie theaters in the United Kingdom and in the United States of America. We have a Regal in Stonefield. In Stonefield, boys and girls, already a ghost town. What's going to happen when the movie theater is temporarily closed? How will the closing of Regal, the second largest movie chain in the country, how will that impact Violent Crown? How will that impact Boys and Girls Alamo Draft House? Judah, can you take care of the leaf blower outside for me? That would mean the world to me. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about H&M closing a number of stores. We're going to talk about the J.C. Penny, the J.C. Penny in Richmond being sold to the mall and whether that's going to trickle over to Charlottesville. The University of Virginia football team showing some, some positivity and some hope, but unfortunately succumbing to a more talented Clemson football team in Death Valley. UVA now getting its first taste of COVID on the Wahoo football team. How about Virginia Tech getting a victory and the Hokies getting a victory minus two, two football coaches, minus nearly two dozen football players on the sidelines with COVID against Duke and Durham. A lot to cover on today's show. I think you're going to like today's broadcast. We'll give some love to Ting Wireless Internet. Save $288 through Ting Fiber Internet through ilovesevil.ting.com. ilovesevil.ting.com. It's the best internet at the best price possible, only through ilovesevil.ting.com. I think the first story, Judah Wickhauer, our director, has got to be from the mayor's Facebook page. This happened over the weekend and immediately became viral amongst the small and medium-sized business community in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Let's get the screenshot from her Facebook page on screen, please, Judah, and give me the thumbs up. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. And I see she's watching the broadcast. Interesting. Um, So I'm going to take a very straightforward um, approach to this Facebook post, Mayor Walker. On Over the weekend, you reference an article... And in this article, I'm just going to read verbatim, ma'am, from your Facebook page. In this article, you say, we need to ban indoor dining immediately. We need some other restrictions as well for a few weeks. If we don't, 
Cases could skyrocket and a full shutdown may become necessary, end quote. You reference this two sentences from the article you post on your Facebook page. You know, you choose not to talk to the media in a number of circumstances, whether print, radio, or television, and you originate your ideas and your content on your Facebook page or through Facebook Live. That's a fact and reality. That's not me speaking out of turn. We also know that there's a city council meeting today, tonight. We also know, let's just be honest and realistic, we're going into the winter where consumer confidence and the average Joe or the average Sarah may not want to sit outside because it's getting chillier. For us to deprioritize, de-emphasize, for us to throw shade on indoor dining is just, frankly speaking, not being in touch with reality. If, if you're looking for an entire industry that's the backbone or a foundation of the Charlottesville, Almaro County, and Central Virginia community, look no further than restaurants and food and beverage. And, and, and to say that banning indoor dining is the right approach as we head into the winter months is, frankly speaking, not seeing the forest through the trees. Can I be any more clear than that? I don't think so. I've, on this program, through this platform, and through this audience that reaches over a quarter million people a year, backed by analytics, I've tried to come up with creative ways to drive incremental revenue to the city of Charlottesville and to Albemarle County. One of those creative ways is to emphasize, utilize, leverage, showcase the outside options for restaurants, for, um, for wineries, and for breweries from putting tables outside standpoint. Let's utilize the parking lots. Let's utilize the pavilion. Let's utilize the side streets. Let's allow our merchants to set up tables and point of interactions and points of sale in the pavilion, on side streets, on the brick-covered downtown mall. That hasn't become a reality. I've emphasized the need to, to create a, a beer garden type of setup where the, the city has a, a point of interaction right on the heart of downtown mall at Central Place, right across from Zocalo, right in the heart of the city, right in the heart of the mall. There used to be a kiosk there, and it can be done from a safe and social distance capacity. Come up to the kiosk. Wear a mask. Maybe it's automated, similar to the parking garage setup. Maybe it's a $15 an hour city employee. Give the city $5. City keeps that money. City gives you a bracelet and a cup. You can go to the restaurants, patronize them, and then you can take your nosh and your beverage and walk it up and down the mall. Incremental revenue for the city. Driving patri patronization to the, the, the restaurants and merchants on the mall, utilizing the outdoor space. That idea hasn't come to fruition. Why? Why haven't we put the pavilion into work? We have a structure that's tented. We have a structure that's covered. We have a structure with access to bathrooms, a structure that's al fresco, outside. Yet it's being ignored, forgotten. Why don't we put some kind of incremental revenue, eat outside, enjoy outside situation there? Instead, what we have is the most influential public servant, the most influential politician, someone who not only is the mayor of Charlottesville, someone who is a member of the CACVB, and more on tourism here on the program, writing on her Facebook page that we need to consider a ban on indoor dining. I mean, madre que pasa, chico. Do you understand what you're doing? Compound that with City Hall sending letters. Put the, set, put the letter on screen. Put the letter on screen. Put the letter on screen. I got this from multiple restaurant owners over the weekend. City Hall sending letters to, to, to restaurant owners. And, and give me the, look at the screen. I'll read it verbatim to you. This is from City Charlottesville to restaurant owners, to whom it may concern. As you are aware, at the end of June, the city manager's office pushed the deadline for downtown mall and corner cafe spaces from July 1st to September 30th. On September 23rd, staff received authorization to push the deadline to October 30th. This letter is to inform you that all 2020 cafe fees, as well as any outstanding payments, so taxes that have not been paid, debt that has not been paid, are due in full no later than close of business Friday, October 30th. 
Please be aware that any restaurant that does not meet payment deadline is subject to loss of cafe space. They will take the space away from you and may need to remove equipment and furnishings. Let me understand something, boys and girls. Now I see two city councilors watching the program. Now I see three Albemarle County Board of Supervisors watching the program. I'll hold you accountable. Let me understand something. So this is what we have. We have COVID-19 that's demoralizing, depressing, destroying, downright, downright destroying hospitality, food and beverage, tourism and hotels, restaurants. And what we are doing, three city councilors watching the program, what we're doing for city leadership is instead saying you're going to pay your taxes on cafes ASAP, including anything you previously owe, and we may also ban your indoor dining, basically saying to you, we're going to step on your throat, we're going to flick a cigarette in your face, we're going to burn the cigarette in your face so it leaves a permanent scar, and we're basically going to terminate your dreams, your sweat equity, your hard work, and everything you've done for this community. Do you understand what you're doing, Mayor Walker? I mean, because, good gosh, it's like either not seeing the forest through the trees, and that's the best case scenario, or it's you don't care, and you're choosing to destroy the city and rebuild in what you think is the right way it should be according to your perspective. Because banning indoor dining, and I'm getting the message from the team here, we have 26 restaurant owners that they know of watching the program. And you eliminating indoor dining going into the winter, and you are pretty much determining the death of small and medium-sized restaurant owners and businesses in Charlottesville. And that will create a consumer confidence impact. And if council says, we're going to ban indoor dining, that will create a consumer confidence situation where people that just read headlines or really don't roll their sleeves up and dig into stories and understand the nuance of what's happening, they will then become scared and will not patronize a foundational industry that drives revenue tax for Charlottesville and Albemarle County and certainly attracts people from outside the area who are paying, giving us their money to enjoy this community. Can you imagine Charlottesville and Central Virginia without this fabulous industry? Because that's what this mayor is trying to do. Compound that with City Hall saying all outdoor cafe taxes are due by October 30th and it's clearly a disregard or, 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 or clearly in I don't give a rat's ass about you guys. Now let's compare it and contrast it to Albemarle County. And, and I, I'm going to give Albemarle County some props right now. Albemarle County is, had a grant program that expired this past Friday. And this grant program funneled county resources and dollars to vineyards, wineries, and restaurants within Almaro. And this grant program said, here's money. This money can be used for you to tent your outside. This money can be used for you to heat and cool your tented outside area. Because we, the leadership for supervisors watching the program, we, the leadership at Almaro County, understand the value proposition of what you provide this municipality from a tax revenue standpoint, and furthermore, from a branding, promotional, tourism standpoint of attracting people that are now in the staycation mindset. People ain't freaking vacationing. They're getting in their car with their family, with their pod, and they're driving five hours or less to an area where they're going to hopefully stay at a hotel or an Airbnb or just make a day trip. And they're going to say, where can I get some, some family fun, some good food, some good drink, and be safe from COVID? County realizes that. 
tent the spaces, cool the spaces, heat the places, just keep tax revenue coming to our municipality because we're experiencing a budget deficit just like municipalities are across America. So we're gonna give a little to get more on the back end. And from my vantage point, that's called good business and being a good community ally. Instead, we have someone that was a part-time employee at the parks, is a part-time employee, at the Parks and Recs Department, never run a business, never been in a leadership role from a business standpoint, never done a balance sheet, probably never seen a P&L, saying I'm gonna flip the switch perhaps on indoor dining as restaurants go into the effing winter when they're just trying to survive. I mean, I, I'm flabbergasted. I'm flummoxed. I'm downright confused, frustrated, angry, scratching my head, concerned. Are you? Should be. You take away indoor dining. Just being straightforward, you exponentially increase the death rate of F and B in our region. And you don't think it's gonna have a trickle over effect to the other counties, you're nuts. Central Virginia goes as the city of Charlottesville goes. Central Virginia, Fluvanna, Orange, Louisa, Albemarle, Green, Nelson, goes as the city of Charlottesville goes. It will create a domino impact that will ripple throughout 2021. Mark that down, mark that down, mark that down, mark that down. Interestingly, this comment on Facebook, put it back on screen, Judah, put it back on screen. I see you're watching, Mayor Walker. Um, interestingly, this comment on Facebook, give me the thumbs up when it's on there, please happens less than 48 hours before the council meeting, which is this evening. <sighs> I'm gonna get to your comments, including the comments that are coming in from restaurant owners across social media. Um, restaurant owners, if you have perspective you wanna offer, put them on the feed, and I will share it to what appears to be two counselors and three Supervisors watching the program, one supervisor from Nelson County watching the show. Daniel Kaufman is the owner of Public. We love Public on West Main. I've said many times on this program, Public may have the best happy hour, certainly one of the best happy hours in Charlottesville. Daniel Kaufman just put on the feed, if you ban indoor dining, we are done, period. I don't, look, I am sympathetic and empathetic to the fear and to this virus. The President of the United States just got it. It's a very real virus. I am sympathetic and empathetic. But I am also, I also understand that the folks that are running these restaurants, this is like, their life. This is, they've spent years, if not generations. One of the restaurant owners watching this program, her family, multiple generation business. Years, if not generations, of blood, sweat, and tears building these brands and businesses. And to say, just because you're a government official, I'm going to say you can't do something with your business and I'm going to ban your indoor dining as we head into the winter, that is like, a, like a, a slap in the face, a kick in the cojones. I mean, just downright disrespect. Daniel Kaufman, Public Fish says, I have put 15 people back to work since reopening. How do I keep them if they take away indoor dining from me? I cannot. Nina Finazzo from Sal's Cafe Italia watching the program right now. She says this is an absolute outrage, what they're considering doing to us. 
Restaurant on West Main. Don't use my name. Please pass along this message. Jerry, if indoor dining is taken away from us, we will close our doors and we won't reopen our restaurant again. Put it back on screen, Judah. And then flip the letter onto screen from City Hall. And the really terrifying aspect of this is this is being done during a budget deficit when, when, when schools... Schools are getting hit from both sides. City schools are having enrollment issues where parents are taking their kids out of schools because the schools are being done virtually. And then on top of that, the local municipality is really getting impacted from a, a, a revenue standpoint with its budget and what it can do for 2021 and beyond. So by doing things like this, you are literally hurting the next generation from an education standpoint because the funding's not going to be there. You are also impacting the municipality from just having a cash flow to run the municipality. Keep the letter on for longer so they can read it. Look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen. More comments coming in. I will get to these comments. Oh, this is what I'm going to say. We, as a municipality, in some ways made our own bed. Because we, as a municipality, elected... someone with no political experience, an activist background, and zero business sense. That's, that's safe to say. And now, this particular individual has obviously gained total control of council. Michael Payne was on Mayor Walker's Get Elected Committee. It's a fact. Heather and Lloyd need to stand up but have not truly to the mayor. And Cena is kind of this very impactful vote that's wavering in the wind and unsure what to do. The mayor is also a board member, put it on screen, the screenshot from the website, tell me when it's on screen, is also a board member of the CACVB, the organization that is the influencer, look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen, the organization that is the influencer, the influence, and the, and the, and the driving force behind tourism in the area. Put the NBC29 tourism headline on screen if you could, Judah Wickhauer. Thank you, sir. The tourism industry... This was in NBC 29 over the weekend. New numbers released from the Charlottesville Almoral Convention and Visitors Bureau are showing the big dollar impact of tourism in Charlottesville and Almoral County with tourism accounting for $680 million in revenue in 2019. In Almoral County in Charlottesville, tourism spending accounted for more than $22 million in tax collections last year. Good Lord. So a $200 million budget in the city of Charlottesville, a $400 million budget in Admiral County, and $22 million straight from taxes from tourism alone last year. $680 million in revenue for the industry in totality last year. And we are straight up spitting at the industry and saying, we're going to determine the future of what's going to happen to you. And we're going to do that two weeks before it gets frigid and the temperatures are consistently 50 degrees or under. If you're not upset, frustrated, confused, angry, then I don't think you're truly reading the tea leaves correctly. Comments coming in. Jerry, this is from Carol Thorpe. 
You are correct to highlight Mayor Walker's thin resume and lack of business acumen, Carol Thorpe says. Fostering the financial health of Seville is not what motivates her tenure, but she is only one of five counselors. This goes nowhere without the complicity of, le of at least two others. We need to hold them accountable. Well, Mayor Walker and Carol Thorpe, great comment. Michael Payne on Mayor Walker's Get Elected Committee. I've said for, since the, I've said since last year, and I started saying this, that how council was going to play out was Snook and Heather Hill on one side and Sita, excuse me, and Payne on Walker on the other and the split vote, the share vote, the, the, the vote that was going to determine an outcome was Cena McGill. And right now McGill is siding with Walker and Payne. Barbara Lundgren says, we need a mayor who loves Charlottesville. Andre Xavier says, it is, Andre Xavier owns multiple businesses in the city of Charlottesville. It is time that we choose a new mayor immediately. Chris, who's watching in North Downtown, when does the mayor choose to resign? More comments coming in. Put your comments and thoughts in the perspective, in, in, in perspective in the comment section. I feel for these folks. Why would you open? I got this from Gary Grant. Gary Grant, who watches this program routinely. Gary Grant said, um, Toby from Toby's Pawn Shop. Toby from Toby's Pawn Shop was on Joe Thomas in the morning. He was an old boss of mine when I was doing radio broadcasting. Joe Thomas had Toby from Toby's Pawn Shop on his morning show. Joe Thomas said, or, Joe, or Toby said to Joe Thomas, I'm going to close my Charlottesville City store on West Main, my pawn shop, and I'm going to open up a second pawn shop in Albemarle County. I already have one, but I'm going to open up a second one. I'm going to close this business and just go across this invisible line to Albemarle and do commerce there. If you have somebody who has zero business acumen, zero business experience, is a, a, a part-time worker within the Parks and Recs Department telling you what you can or cannot do for your business... Would you not also choose or think about closing your doors and then moving it a mile, a mile and a half, two miles, two and a half miles across an invisible line and then open your doors on the other side of the invisible line? I would consider doing it. The reason I don't have to do it is because this business is run in a virtual capacity, worldwide, countrywide, Central Virginia wide, Commonwealth wide. More comments coming in. Share your comments. Put your perspective in. Your frustration, whatever it may be. If you agree, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, tell me. If you think I'm wrong and you think indoor dining should be closed, you can put it in the perspective. I will straight up read your perspective on air, and I will, I will, I will, um, I will go about your perspective, um, even though I disagree with it. But I will go about it in a respectful fashion because I, I, I can have a dialogue with someone who, who does not agree with me and do it respectfully on the show. So if you think I'm completely wrong, put it in the feed and I will put it up, I will put it on air if you think I'm completely wrong. A couple more headlines I want to get to then I'm going to get to your comments. I see a lot of comments here. We'll get to their comments, Jude, in a matter of moments. Carol, I'll get to yours. Grace, I will get to yours. Barracks Road... Merchants, I will get to you. Corner Merchants Association, I will get to you. I want to get this story out before we flip the headlines there you see on screen. Regal, get it on screen. Regal said over the weekend um, that it's going to close its theaters temporarily. This is no bueno, Chico. Regal, the second largest movie chain in the world says it's going to temporarily close its movie theaters in the U.S. and U.K. This straight up impacts Stonefield. Stonefield, which is already ghost town, this straight up impacts Stonefield. 
So my question to you is, A, what's going to happen to Stonefield now that it's lost arguably... Um, I'm sending a text to the city councilor that's watching the show right now. I'm texting literally the city councilor, one of the city councilors that's watching the show. All right, I just texted them back because they're responding to what I'm saying. Um, and I'm not going to air... I appreciate your perspective, Counselor. Um, if Stonefield loses its movie theater, it's number one draw to an otherwise ghost town-esque shopping center. Um, it's number one draw to a, a, a shopping center that has arguably the highest price per square foot, probably second behind Barracks Road Shopping Center. What's going to happen to that shopping center? Well, I think it's in a vulnerable, precarious position, and it's close to, frankly, crumbling. How many restaurant turns have we seen there? I mean, whether it's Medici, Parallel 38, Trevinia, whether it's Pasture, and then Pasture. Pasture Q, um, whether it's rock salt. We've had a lot of turnover from a business standpoint in, in Stonefield. In fact, really the only merchants that seem to be able to afford or sustain in this shopping center is big box brands with long or huge burn rates. That means cash on balance sheets. And they're able to withstand this lull in, in an economic, um, you know, in a lull in economy while also having the cash on hand to pay these obscene square footages and price per squares. Now the movie theater is gone. With the movie theater gone, which is one of the flagship, which one of the linchpins that drives people to the shopping center and gets them browsing or window shopping or having some beers or some wine or some food before a 7.30 showing or after a 7.30 showing, before a 9 o'clock showing, whatever it may be, what's going to happen? Well, I think you're going to see more vacancies at Stonefield. Compound that with COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that shopping center is very vulnerable right now. That will impact Almaro County. The next question I ask of you is, if Regal closes its movie theaters temporarily, what are the odds that these movie theaters will open back in on the other side of COVID-19? Let's just be straightforward. I had an individual I was going back and forth with in the I Love Seville group. Join the I Love Seville group on Facebook. Great engagement on that group. And this particular individual said, it's temporary. They're going to be back open. I, I, I'm going to throw this to you. Do we think the future of a business where a couple hundred people get in a room that has no windows, no fresh air, that probably is not clean correctly and has not the best ventilation, do we think the future of that business model is positive? Nah, dog. Nah, dog. It ain't positive. Do we think the future of going with 300 strangers to, play, to pay for an overpriced ticket, to pay for an overpriced box of popcorn, an overpriced soda, to stand in line, to rub shoulders with people you've never met with, strangers, to sit in seats, to stand on floors, to put our hand on armrests that may or may not have been clean, to sit in a room for three hours that's poorly ventilated, that has no windows, to watch something that's over overpriced that we can otherwise do on our couch with our pod in a safe setting at home? Do we think the future of the business model of movie theaters is a bright one? Nah, dog. Nah, dog. It ain't, it ain't bright. So how does a regal closing impact the movie theater Alamo draft house? Or how does it impact Violent Crown on the downtown mall? Folks, Last week, we explained that Alamo Draft House is in the pooper. Alamo Draft House is now saying that people can individually rent their movie theaters for $300. $150 for the theater and $150 from a food and beverage tab, and you can rent a movie theater. Anybody who comes to the movie theater just has to buy a ticket, and you can have a movie theater for five people, four people, three people, 20 people, and that's it. Do we think that is promising for uh, Alamo Draft House and Fifth Street Station? Nah, dog. Nah, dog. Violent Crown is copying the Alamo model where it's allowing people to rent individual movie theaters. Is that good for Violent Crown on the downtown mall? Nah, dog. 
Regal will create a trickle-over impact on the other movie theaters in this area. If you don't think that's going to happen, you're just not reading the tea leaves correctly. It's no secret that you look on Wall Street right now and AMC stock is down significantly. I expect by the close of 2020 that Violent Crown and Alamo Drafthouse will also temporarily close their theaters. And that will create an apocalypse potentially in the winter. We have a city that is marginalizing restaurants and not helping them with their outdoor dining by providing grant money for tents in a city that's not helping restaurants, food and beverage, hospitality, wineries, breweries, that is not providing tents or heating or cooling for outside patios. We have a city that is demanding that restaurants pay their cafe taxes, the ones that are in the rears or the ones to get them current by October 30th. Put the letter back on screen. And then on top of that, we have the impact of movie theaters looking like they're going to close across the city and the county by close of business 2020. And we already know the municipalities are impacted from a fiscal year 2021 budget and beyond. We don't even know what 2022 is going to look like. I'm going to get to your comments now. Put your comments in the comment section. Put your comments in the comment section. Do it now. Put your comments in the comment section. We'll relay them on air to everybody that's watching. Andre Xavier, Sevil Hop on Tours co-founder, Sevil Travel owner, an entrepreneur that has multiple businesses that run in the city, multiple businesses that run in the county that cover Central Virginia, pays a lot of taxes to these municipalities. Andre Xavier, movie theaters as we know it are dead. Streaming is the future. Look at all the new services and streaming. He's right. He's right. We saw this. Look at what we've been doing. We saw this two and a half years ago before streaming was truly emphasized. Look at what Netflix's stock is doing. Look at what HBO is doing. It's rolling out a streaming service. Look at what NBC is doing. It's rolling out a streaming service. Peacock, Amazon, streaming. Everybody's rolling out a streaming service because much like watching sports in person, boys and girls... Would you choose to watch a sporting event from the nosebleeds or average seats when you have to go two hours before the game, three hours before the game, pay an overpriced ticket, sit in the hot or the cold, have crappy seats, overpay, overpay for soda, overpay for a crappy hot dog, sit, sit near strangers during COVID, or would you instead watch that football game from your plush leather couch in the perfect temperature imaginable, in surround sound on a 63-inch speaker with a two-tap kegerator at home that has Minuteman for yourself, Ghost for your wife, a six-burner grill outside on your deck where you can cook Timmer Creek meat or eat sandwiches from Peloton Station, fried chicken from Wayside, have a couple buddies over, drink some Angel's Envy, some Minuteman, some Ghosts, Hit pause and fast forward, watch replays, and with today's technology, literally make it seem like you're sitting on the 50-yard line. Of course you're going to do it at home. Keith Smith, I'm traveling down I-95, driving home from Connecticut, listening to the show today. I love the I Love Seville show and what you guys are doing. Christopher Eagle, Real Estate 3. Oh, it's a temporary closure? They'll come back? Oh, I didn't realize that. But your point on giant place with no windows and no fresh air with this virus, not sure many will go back. Movies are dead. Movie theaters are dead. That's a huge chunk of building area that's going to turn into a vacancy now. Holy cow. What goes in that space with such high rents at Stonefield? Half the businesses can't stay there. He's exactly right, Christopher Eagle. What could possibly replace a movie theater in Fifth Street Station on the downtown mall or in Stonefield? Some people have said a go-kart track or a laser tag facility. That's not going to work in COVID. Carol Thorpe. Jerry, Heather Hill is not on one side. She worked hand-in-hand -hand with Mayor Walker to pressure Dr. Richardson out of the city manager job. In some issues, they are tighter than we think. That might be true. 
Manny Smith likes the nah dog hashtag. Thank you, Manny Smith. Miss seeing you on the downtown mall. Sue Martin watching the program. Instagram DMs coming in. We will get to those in a matter of moments. My entire business is called, excuse me, one of my businesses. We have three primary revenue streams. We do business to business, B2B, an advertising agency where we help clients build brand awareness. That brand, brand awareness translates to incremental customers, new customers. That brand awareness t translates to uh, repeat customers doing repeat business, more of it. And when brand awareness is strategically enhanced and that business gets new customers or it gets old customers doing new business, that translates into incremental revenue. It's a simple formula. We are the best at doing that in a 65, 70 mile radius of Charlottesville. That's clear cut, no one can argue with that. That's one revenue stream, one vertical, one silo. The second one is we have 27 tenants, 27 rental income streams every month. Many in the Macklin building, some strategically placed in Charlottesville and Amaro County as well. And then the third silo or vertical or revenue stream is a network that is now reaching more people than any other brand or platform in Central Virginia. Can't argue with the numbers or the metrics. When you combine all three, you get what's called vertical integration or complementary services that make each one better. Vertical integration. Do more with less. The primary face or identity of the three verticals is this I Love Seville moniker or brand. So we're most known for this interaction, I Love Seville, and this network. It's three on the revenue streams, mind you. But we're most known for this. The face of what we do is about the long game and the fact that we're bullish for Charlottesville and its future. And I'm about to say something extremely ballsy. The, the premise, the foundation of what we do is the long game of Charlottesville. I'm seeing city managers sprint and hit the road, Jack. I'm seeing city executives flee and sprint. City, city police chiefs flee and sprint. I'm seeing on their way out the door, city managers saying I can't get along with certain people. I'm seeing what I'm watching the council meeting, bickering, dysfunction, and just piss poor optics. I'm seeing someone on the dais tell the world's newspaper that Charlottesville is an ugly to the soul place. I'm seeing a budget deficit. I'm seeing multiple industries frustrated and angry with leadership. And I continue to emphasize where there's smoke, there's fire. And in Roanoke, Virginia, we had a city councilor unexpectedly resign in Roanoke, Virginia. We now have people in the daily progress that pushed and influenced and helped the mayor get elected. Folks in the daily progress, activists in our community saying the mayor is not who she was when we helped her get elected. Activists in this community straight up saying it's time that she resigns. It's, the, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Why is the pressure, the spotlight, and the attention, and the requests from the community about resignation, that needs more momentum driven behind it. I see you're watching. You don't appear to be able to get along with anybody, Mayor. You don't appear to have any small or medium-sized business experience or acronym, acumen, Mayor. 
you straight up called Bellamy Brown, who is running for city council, who is a retired Marine, who's a small and medium-sized business consultant, who grew up in this area, a talented African-American leader in Central Virginia, who's gone through the political, through the Sorensen Institute at UVA, you straight up called him the worst kind of toxic SHIT possible. You said that. I, I'm just not, I, I just don't understand why you go about your business being so, is, is the word divisive, Judah? Is that the word? It's a decent word. Is, is that the word? Is that how you say it? divisive? I would say divisive. Divisive? Thank you. Divisive? Divisive. Judah, thank you. So divisive. Am I reading the tea leaves incorrectly? Am I reading the tea leaves incorrectly? If, if, if I am, tell me. Oh. What's happening is the following. And I have the courage and the gumption to say this. Because this is what's happening. What's happening is this. Are you ready? We all know this is happening. When the most influential person in this community, not named Corin Capshaw, Joffrey Woodruff, or Ann Malik, frankly speaking, we're starting to be put into that category with the influence we have, and we know it. When The mayor of Charlottesville is becoming the primary reason that the community is divided. Should we not be concerned? Isn't the role of the most influential person in the community that's not only mayor, but one of the key figures for the tourism industry in Central Virginia, a board member with the CACVB, isn't this person's role to unite? to galvanize, to create solidarity, to be the North Star, to be the one that's holding the bell, to be the Paul Revere, to be the one saying, follow me, I will lead the charge and we will take you. I will help lead you to the promised land of greener pastures, of economic prosperity, of, of a brighter future for the community. Is that not the role of the mayor? I have... I, I, I respect and love and am empathetic and I, and, I, and I champion activism. We must have activism. It's our right as Americans to be activists and to say and speak what's on our mind. However, that right stops when you become the mayor. Because then, your goal is to galvanize, unify, create solidarity, and not divide. And that's what's happening now. Comments, put them in the feed. Comments, put them in the feed. Comments, put them in the feed. We will get to a Julian Freeman. Thank you. Love you, Julian Freeman. Love that comment. Ah. Oh. A couple more headlines, and then I'm going to get to your comments today on the I Love Seville show. Um, I had a phenomenal experience over the weekend. Get the photos on screen. Families, dads, moms, boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, and wives, whether you have kids or don't have kids, whether you're married or not, whether you're dating someone or not, whether you're just looking for something to do with your friends, I very much suggest the Lloyd Family Farm. It's about 45 minutes away from Charlottesville. It's in the... Uh, Goochland area, Louisa area, it's phenomenal. You pay $10, you get a wristband, you can go to a pumpkin patch, you can pet live animals, you can ride tractors, you got a hayride, there's a corn maze. Just, it's just an incredible, fun, safe, 
COVID-friendly experience, Lloyd Family Farm. Write it down, Lloyd Family Farm. We did it over the weekend. Dudes, it was enjoyable. One more headline. You're flipping through those photos, Judah? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to get to your comments on everything we've talked about that in five minutes. Put them on the feed. Put them on the feed. Put them on the feed. We'll, get, we'll, we'll dot the I's and cross the T's on the show about what's happening with restaurants, with cafes, with, with banning indoor dining, Albemarle County versus the city of Charlottesville with helping small businesses, the impact of Regal closing in Stonefield, whether that'll create a trickle-over impact to Violent um, and, the movie th and, and, and Alamo. Um, another J.C. Penney has, has gone under contract. This one, um, the second in Richmond to go under contract. J.C. Penney has put another one of its five Richmond area stores under contract in the Richmond area. This time, the J.C. Penney store at Virginia Center Commons Mall and Northern Henrico is going to be sold to the mall owners. Listen to this. This is what the deal was. This is how bleak big box retail is. The mall owners, which are the Reb Key Company and, Chase, and Chester based Shaman Hotels, they bought the JC Penney store in its parking lot. They got 97,000 square feet of JC Penney store, including the outside parking lot, a total of 7.67 acres. 97,000 square feet JC Penney store, the outside parking lot, and 7.67 acres. You know what the price tag was for this? Start throwing some numbers out. What do you think the price tag was for a 97,000 square foot JC Penney store and 7.67 acres with a dope parking lot? What do you think the price is? Less than $2 million. Good Lord. It's assessed at 1.58, the deal closing right around assessment. Think about that. That's a hell of a lot of spot. I, the people that are going to buy, there's going to there's gonna be private equity groups, people that are cash rich, people that are say, sitting on piles of paper. And these people are, are going to go around and they're going to buy malls, distressed properties. And they're going to get them for pennies on the dollar. And then they're going to, they're going to get a steal of the century. And 10 or 15 years we're, down the road, we're going to look back and say, these people bought these, some of the best real estate Closest access to the interstate, closest access to the bypass, a heavily traveled uh, area next to 29 in Almoral County or in Richmond, wherever it may be, and they bought them for pennies on the dollar, and now look what they have. That's called vision, and that's going to happen. H&M is closing 250 stores globally. That shows you another death of retail. You get that on screen. 250 stores closing H&M. 5% of its store portfolio closing due to COVID-19. I'm going to get to your comments on restaurants and the mayor here briefly. Clemson beat UVA 41-23 to in Death Valley. I'm going to give you a couple takes from that UVA game. Look, UVA, I know they lost 41-23. to They showed heart, the Wahoos. We had a couple of bad plays. The Armstrong interception where he was thrown off his back foot on the run outside the pocket, that was a bad throw. He also had an interception in the end zone where the Clemson defensive back made a hell of a one-handed catch on UVA's six-foot-seven wide receiver, Lavelle Davis. And both those throws, Armstrong, bad passes. When you have a six-foot-seven wide receiver in Lavelle Davis going against a defensive back that's much shorter, the only thing you do is not underthrow the ball. You overthrow the ball, so you allow your six foot seven receiver to go get it. When you underthrow the ball, in particular in the end zone, you then take away the wide receiver's height advantage, and you actually put the advantage on the defensive back. So those were two bad plays by Armstrong. That being said, that kid's got moxie, dude. I mean, for his second start, for him to go into Death Valley... Three touchdowns, two picks. He also had 89 yards on the ground. He is a tank. He has moxie. This Davis kid is a beast at 6'7". Davis had 58 yards receiving. And when Davis at 6'7 can get the ball downfield and make plays, that means Kemp 
in the slot and across the middle, has more room to work with, and it's no surprise Kemp had 10 catches for 96 yards. I'm going to tell you, I think the future is very bright for the UVA football team. You cannot go into Death Valley and make the mistakes they did and expect to upset the number one team in the country. The line was 28 and a half points, the Vegas line. UVA lost by 18. There is some hope and some promise with this Wahoo football team. They got some talent, boys and girls. And Virginia Tech, they lost, they beat Duke, excuse me, Virginia Tech beat Duke 38-31 in Durham. The Hokies missing 21 players and two coaches due to COVID-19, UVA out, UVA out seven players and one coach. I was impressed by both Virginia and Virginia Tech over the weekend. Get your comments in the comment section. Judah, let's give some love to Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Dr. Wagner, changing people's lives. Chiropractic care, sports medicine, physical therapy. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner has your Back. Comments coming in, and they're coming in fast and furious. Laura Monk is watching. Jerry, I live in the Star Hill neighborhood. I watch your show religiously. I really like your I Love Seville Daily Digest because I can catch up on everything quickly when I can't watch your show from start to finish. At first, I disagreed with you, Jerry, when it came to Mayor Walker. Now you continue to point out all the issues that you find troubling, and I'm starting to see what you're talking about. One more thing, it's up to us as citizens whether or not we will dine indoors at restaurants. It's not up to government officials to tell us what to do. That's just how I feel. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Stephanie Rhodes, love Stephanie Rhodes on this program. Stephanie Rhodes, an influencer on this show. Stephanie, I really mean that. She said, so proud of my who's, they held their own. I agree, I was proud of them too. I was so proud of them. When they were driving in the second half, and they were driving coming out of halftime, and they were taking the ball downfield, you saw literally the momentum change from Clemson to Virginia, and Armstrong was playing with Moxie. Now, that drive, which was a critical drive in that game, ended with an Armstrong interception in the end zone when he underthrew Lavelle Davis, the six foot seven wide receiver. And frankly speaking, the Clemson defensive back, they were describing it on the broadcast as an Odell Beckham type interception. And dude, it was like one of the nastiest interceptions I have seen in college football. The dude caught it with one hand. I watched the replay with my wife. I'm like, did you see that? And my wife, who appreciates sports very much, she said, that was disgusting. That drive, in a lot of ways, really changed the momentum in the game. It would have, had they scored a touchdown there, it would have cut it to single digits, the Clemson lead. But I think this Virginia football team has a strong foundation, and it's got a hell of a coach in Bronco Mendenhall. The players clearly look up to this guy. And Armstrong, while he is not as dynamic as Perkins, Bryce Perkins, he's got a lot of tools to work with. He is, a, he is very physical running the football, extremely physical. He needs to work on his accuracy a little bit, and I think that's going to come with game reps and experience. I really do. I like this team. I like this team. Carol, Jerry, all the things you describe as the role of the mayor of Charlottesville are accurate, but, ba but Mayor Nakia Walker never promised to be or do any of those things when she ran for office. Before anyone cast a single vote for her, she called Charlottesville a beautiful, ugly city for which she would, quote, unmask the illusion. She told voters who she was and what she would do. When someone does that, you should believe them. She got blinders on and, and a laser focus to disrupt, divide, and destroy to remake the city into her vision. And the trial of COVID, the cost of her in office, is now on full, dis full display. Carol Thorpe, gosh, that was a comment. L bring it, Carol Thorpe, bring it. I'm going to read this again. Carol Thorpe. All the things you described as the role of the mayor are accurate, but Mayor Walker never promised to be 
or to do any of those things when she ran for office. Before anyone cast a single vote for her, she called Charlottesville a, quote, beautiful, ugly city, end quote, for which, for which she would, quote, unmask the illusion, end quote. She told voters who she was and what she would do. When someone does that, you should believe them. She has blinders on and a laser focus to disrupt, divide, and destroy, to remake the city into her vision. In the trials of COVID, the cost of her in office is now on full display. Carol Thorpe, Carol Thorpe, Carol Thorpe! Elena Mangione, I love you, Elena. And I love you because you have gumption and you have courage and you speak your mind and you are freaking real. That's why I like you. Elena Mangione of Mangione's on West Main, the restaurant tour. She says, we as restaurants, the amazing contributors to the Charlottesville economy, we definitely need to rally against the mayor's latest initiative. Show the Facebook post, Judah. Put it on screen. Give me the thumbs up when it is, please, sir. It's another restaurant owner. We must rally together against the mayor's latest agenda to ban indoor dining. Put it on screen. Elena Mangione is watching and listening to you en route to Charlottesville from the Outer Banks. So she's on the North Carolina-Virginia line watching the show. Kevin Higgins is watching the program. It's on screen, Judah. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. Just flip back and forth between her Facebook post and the fact that Charlottesville City Hall is demanding that restaurants pay their cafe taxes by October 30th. Not understanding that cash is king, that maintaining cash flow is the only way these businesses will survive through the winter months. Cash is king. Asking for cash, the opportunity cash of, 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 of making these cafe taxes now, the opportunity cost is devastating, disturbing, and downright will impact them in dirty, dirty ways. Kevin Higgins says, Jerry, she's clearly over her head and as a result, insecure because she is over her head. Her vitriol style, her angry style of communication is an embarrassment to the city of Charlottesville. I imagine anyone stuck having to deal with the mayor of Charlottesville is miserable right now. Look, and I'm going to straight up say this, and it takes gumption to say what I'm going about to say, okay? This takes, I'm, get, I'm, it's, I'm going to take this jacket off. Go to the studio cam, please, sir. And this is really going to, this is really what's happening, and no one's willing to say this because everyone's afraid to say it, but I'm going to straight up say it. I'm going to straight up say it. The same tactics, the same tactics that frustrate, anger, alienate, irritate, bother Americans. Now, I'm not going to make this about presidential politics. I'm not, I don't talk about the White House and presidential politics on this show. I just don't do it. But, and I've said multiple times on this program, we have one candidate who does not have mental stability, mental capabilities, or we should be worried about that. And the other candidate has a corrupt moral compass that comes across as a schoolyard bully. That's our options. A dude who's struggling to make coherent sentences and keep his train of thought. And think about what's going to happen four years from now. And another dude who is a corrupt moral compass who acts, who acts like a schoolyard bully that uses bully tactics. The same bully tactics being utilized by the president of America, and I don't care, it's not about who you're voting for, but the same bully tactics, passive aggressive style, the same uh, uh, in your face strategies, the same threatening behavior, the same mechanisms to try to influence human and social behavior are the same tactics that the mayor of Charlottesville is utilizing. The mayor of Charlottesville is often utilizing the threat of racism to get what she wants passed through City Hall, policy and decisions. And the conversation is frankly this, 
If you're not on my side, then you're not on the side of progress and equality. And you know what I say to that? I say that is just bullyish, out of touch, exhausting, nauseating. And stop doing that. I choose not to disagree with you. Not because of the color of your skin, but I I choose not to disagree with you because of your policies and your decision making, your leadership tactics, and because you divide this community mercilessly. I don't care if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. If you go about being the leader of the community in this way, I'm going to hold you accountable. Whether it was a white person of any descent. And instead what's happening is folks that disagree or speak up or speak out immediately it becomes an issue of race and equality. And it's time that we make this statement. We see through this. The tactics and the ploys are tiring and exhausting. Stop them. Do you disagree with me? More more comments coming in. Jerry, please don't use my name, but please pass along to your viewers that I have a restaurant that we recently reopened. On the UVA corner. When we reopened our restaurant, we were willing, we were able to bring back nine people from the city of Charlottesville that live in the city of Charlottesville. If the mayor closes our indoor dining, we will shut down and we will ask those nine people to find other work because we won't have the business to pay them. I'm not sure I'll open my doors back again if I have to go through winter without indoor dining and without receiving any money from Charlottesville to make my outside space viable. I don't have the money for tents. I certainly don't have the money for outside heating. I'm behind on my rent, and I'm just trying to make it to spring when hopefully we're on the other side of this COVID mess. I haven't slept. We've taken a second mortgage on our home, and my wife is now working after staying home with our two kids. Please pass this along to your viewers. I mean, and that's... I mean... I, I can't get I can't get I can't read the comments fast enough. I can't read the comments fast enough. And you know Kevin Higgins, what a great analogy, Jerry. You absolutely nailed it. I've reached out to the mayor multiple times to come on the show, and I'll say it again, Mayor Walker, you have any you, have, you can come on the program anytime you want. You can speak your side anytime you want. I won't interrupt you. I'll hold you accountable. I won't interrupt you. We are at a cross. I've been in this town for 20 years. I came into this town as a first year at the University of Virginia. I came to this town because my father went to the University of Virginia. I'm second generation UVA. My brother's second generation UVA. We grew up coming to football games here. We grew up eating at Little John's. We grew up coming to Charlottesville from Williamsburg, Virginia. Grew up in Williamsburg, Virginia six or seven, eight, nine times a year. Then I came here in the summer of 2000, and I never left. I love Charlottesville. This is where I'm going to raise my, my, my kid. We got a home. We got businesses. I, I want to pass them to my kid if, if he wants them. 
In my 20 years of being in this community, I, I am having a difficult time. I, I'm going to straight up saying this. In my 20 years of being in this community, I am having a difficult time recognizing Charlottesville. Are you? I'm having a difficult time recognizing Charlottesville. It's time that we start holding leadership even more accountable. And when the mayor says on her Facebook page that she's pretty much going to destroy and crush and kill one of the most important industries in the community, when frankly speaking there's not enough tax revenue to maintain a lot of things, you should be very concerned. My name is Jerry Miller. This is the I Love Seville show. We will continue this topic tomorrow. To say that I'm frustrated, to say that I'm boiling with emotion is an understatement right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk stage right, get some fresh air, and compose myself. Thank you for joining us.